So today I'm just going to film a um, short tutorial which hopefully is um, a little bit to the point as far as applying oils to scale models. In this instance I've got the F4 U1D uh, Corsair by Tamiya in 148 scale. I've painted up the cockpit so we've got the side walls here and I've also got the cockpit tub as well which is all finished and it's been gloss coated which means I've put a gloss clear varnish over that entire model and um, that's how I like to leave things ready for oil washes. Um, having it a gloss surface just helps things flow a lot better and um, gives you quite a lot of opportunity if you want to move um, the oil around. So if you have something that you're not too happy with once it started to dry off a little bit um, you can still move it and it moves very easily. If you've got a matte surface or a satin surface uh, it tends to stick a little bit more but the same applies you can usually still get it off using thinners. Um, either way I would advise, this isn't essential, but I would advise putting a coat, a putting a barrier between your acrylic paint or whatever you've used, in this instance I've used Tamiya paint and I've used a lacquer um, gloss coat. I mean any gloss coat is going to just give you a barrier between your paint finish and then the oil weathering and that's always a good idea. Not essential though. And as with all of this, this isn't an absolute how you should do it, this is just how I do it and hopefully it's of some interest. So um, what I tend to do, I don't see that this is what everyone does etc but this is what's worked for me in the past is, is the fact that this is a green colour for with the cockpit colour here. I tend to use varying shades of green, um, which sort of sounds like it makes sense, but you'll quite often find most people just do a black wash or something. I say most people, but quite a lot of people do, say, a black wash, and that makes all the detail pop. But um, when it comes to oils, I like to try and um, use quite a lot of different colours, blend it all together. Sometimes I like to seal it in again with a further gloss coat if I'm really happy with something, and then I want to add to, the, to that itself. Or... Um, most of the time I let all the colours sort of bleed together and I tend to get a, a nice result is what I think. So for this I'll be using three different types of green uh, followed by this is a sort of green, there's a green hue to this one, this is ivory black but it's you know it's not typically green. This ivory black will I'll probably give us a base to work from as far as is concerned. Um, you could use, this is what I've used in the past, um, in fact I thought I actually had one. I've got olive green here but, um, well I suppose it's similar, yeah these colours don't really do it justice. Now these are my replacements for um, some oil colours that I bought in the past, which I thought was a great idea. Water mixable oil colours, what more could you want? Well, um, let's just say if you're planning on doing this and you're not totally confident, I would avoid water mixable oils. They're not technically without getting bogged down into it they're not technically an oil paint because you can thin them with oil therefore they're not as um, workable as actual oil paints are and therefore you I get into a few problems when I first had these uh, this this one here this watercolor uh, water mixable one plastered it all over the model like you usually do and then found it dried rock, rock solid straight into the gloss coat as well and I could barely get it off so I would avoid those and also, a little pointer, ignore what I've done here, I've actually got some of the cheapest oils, but that's that's just how I like to uh, do things. I don't like to spend massive amount of money on um, these products. But uh, if I were you, you know, this should be sort of base uh, level as far as oil paints, and then work up from that. The more money you spend on oil paints, the better. And um, in fact, the, the best for scale models, I'll put a picture up, is um, I think it's Abtilag. Um, and I believe AK has them now, so uh, they are designed for modelling, seem to be one of the finest pigments uh, I've seen in oils, that's for sure, um, and they're very useful, so if you're just starting out it probably will be worth jumping straight into some of those, or failing that if you're going to go down to your local art store or something, get the best Winsor & Newton proper oil colours that you can get. With all that said, I've got uh, some of the cheapest range you can get here, but uh, not to not to fear, we're, we'll make that work. So I'm probably going to start dark and then come up light. So if we, um, this might not work, the ivory black, we might start with the olive green, but I'm just going to put a bit of that into um, my improvised paint pot here, which is a uh, lid from Pickles. 
And as we can see, that's quite dark. Um, this is going to come across darker on the uh, on the camera than it actually is. Uh, Tissue is always very advisable in this instance, and I'll just um, get some parts out of the way so you can see all of this. So we're on to the next step. So we've got our oil paint, we've got our model ready for um, weathering. Then we need some thinners, and um, you can't go much better than uh, odorless thinners, which um, tend to be sold in all the places that you buy oil paints. Um, believe me, if you don't get odorless thinners, it really is quite a, um, it can be quite a problem. So um, I've tried that in the past and I would not advise it. So just go for odorless thinners and it makes life a lot easier. And we've got a pipette here. Um, again, you could be, you could do this to a fine art, you could measure out everything and all of that, but I don't tend to. I find it, it, the sort of more liberal and laid back you are with these things, the better results I tend to get. That's just me personally. So um, the last thing we're going to need is brushes. And I would advise, again, getting just a good set of brushes. These are just, again, from the art shop. These um, uh, De La Rowney are all sort of the similar kind of um, oil painting stuff. And I've got a very nice wide soft brush there, which is very useful for when you want to do the broad strokes, as it were. Um, I've got a different grade one here as well, which is a little bit stiffer. Um, and I've just broken my bristle cover there. And then some fine paint, uh, paint brushes as well, just for some some of the fine work. And, and the, the, you know, a range like this should be no problem and probably you'd be able to get this for around 15 pounds and they'll last you an awfully long time. So once you've got your brush, I tend to have one that I just mix with and that's this one, this is quite stiff, so I use this for mixing. And what you might notice here is the pigments. They'll be quite um, coarse. And this is what I was talking about with the Abtilung ones and the, and the more um, expensive oil paints. You'll get less of this grittiness and um, that's what you want to get rid of. Uh, but like I said, we'll make this work. Now, lots of thinners there. You want to have a nice, um, a very nice wet mix so it, it flows quite well. And you can actually, because oils are such a great medium to work with, you can, like I'm doing here, I've got sort of a thinner, all the way down to thinners here, and then working up through into thicker paint and quite a heavier mix here as well. So um, you can make it what you want to when it comes to oils, just practice. And I would obviously advise, if you're gonna do this, practice for a first time, not on your best model. Uh, maybe get a practice piece or do it on some plastic card or something and just sort of experiment and you'll be surprised what you can do. Uh, the best thing with oils I've found is their workability, which you'll hear me talk a lot about through this, um, the fact that you can work them and they're always movable. Until you lock them in with a, uh, a varnish coat, be it matte, gloss, whatever you're going to do, um, you can always get them moving and change it until um, until you get what you like. Whereas other some other washes or some modelling washes that um, are widely used can be a little bit tricky they can sort of lock in a little bit so if I just get this I've got a long narrow brush here and you should be able to see if I've done this thin enough now hopefully you can see this and um, we'll just sort of press it into this these parts here just letting capillary action pull this wash mix all the way around these raised details here. Hopefully you'll see instantly the sort of definition you get given here. And that's exactly what we want. You can be quite liberal because you can always get it off using um, a cotton bud or something or even a dry brush that will just uh, wick it all up and take it away. So there you go to emphasize. I've been a little bit heavy on that. You can see that there. Now to make the point If you go ahead with a dry cotton bud like I've got here, and just kind of dab in the middle and that will just pull all of the excess out and leave it all around the recessed parts. Which gives a really nice and natural effect. There's a bit of a shine to that and that's, uh, that's gonna be the case. These oils do take a long time to dry. Uh, that is a good point. Um, 
if you put your oil paint onto a piece of card or a piece of kitchen paper or something that will pull the oil out of the actual pigment and that is the bit that takes um, the time for it to dry so if you do that I'll just do this here just to show you so um, using the same color here if I just do it on this piece of tissue but if you've got a piece of corrugated card or something that usually works a bit better and you might see it starts to leach out and after a while you'll get like a little oil stain around there and that's just showing that it pulls the oil from the paint so always do it on a uh, surface that's going to soak up um, the excess oils and that'll just help with drying time it'll be more to a sort of natural kind of time you know 24 hours and it'll be dry to the extent that oil's dry and like I say they're always still workable so um, until you seal them in they do tend to keep moving so I'm just going to go ahead and run that down here as well, so hopefully you can see how well it moves. And that's running down these ribs we've got here that go, are going sort of vertical along the bottom of the fuselage. And just letting the oil run all the way down. It's, hopefully you can see there, sorry it's a little bit dark, I'm struggling with the light here. And you should be able to see that that gives quite a nice effect there. And that's just the beginning of um, what we're going to do. So while that's drying, while that's just there, I'm going to um, get a bit of the olive green now. And here you can see some of the oil, as I haven't used these before. And um, I'm actually going to just use some of this in the mix you've already got down here in the sort of in the the area that wasn't um, which is a bit thinner, just there. And that is going to mix quite nicely with the colour we've already got, and you actually get quite a few different shades of green running into the black there which is quite useful uh, for different shades so I'm going to pick up a bit of the thinner there and then go in here with a bit of the green try and pick up a bit of the paint and then if we go back in here I'm going to just pop it along there. And again, that's just adding to the depth. And run down here as well. This is a bit of a thicker mix, so it's not as free flowing. And um, should go some way to show you the sort of controllability that you can have with oils. Which is again another a very another useful aspect of it, and um, letting the thinner go wherever as well, and the, and the mix it, it all helps because you can just take it off when we get the uh, cotton bud here, and then it's the same principle. And I'm just kind of wiping that off in the middle there, getting a little bit streaking going, and I'll just sort of pick up. A lot of it there. Now, sometimes these techniques can be a little bit subtle and a bit hard to tell until um, it's kind of dried for one, and then when you actually put your final matte or satin coat on, and then you'll find that it all sort of comes into place, then and it sort of it, it, it tends to pop. So um, don't be worried. And again, you can always change it to. Um, keep moving it like I'm doing here I'm just going over with an actual I haven't got any paint on this just going over with the dampness of the brush from the oils and it's just picking it up and moving it around and you can do whatever you want to do again with the q-tip again with the cotton bud just wiping off there then I'm going to add in some of this lighter sap green although I don't think it's much lighter I think it's actually a, just a deeper green color as you can see there And that's going to give quite a strong 
sense of green into this mix. And now it's at this point, I'm probably going to need a bit more thinner. But we'll see how we go. And we'll try a bit more. Into the mix. Pick up a bit more of the paint there as well. dollop of it in there now. Um, oh, I am mixing this with my fine brush but uh, that tends to happen. You just get involved with whatever you've got at the time. It's, this isn't ideal for the integrity of this brush but um, I'll go with it for the time being. And then this is a nice thin mix now and I'm just going to use this just to run over probably the final part of this just actually more I suppose I'm trying to highlight things with this lighter colour I guess that's what I'm trying to do here but with oils instead in a very kind of wet mix and I tend to keep doing this until I get the right feeling sometimes I want to mix paints uh, colours as well that I don't have like I've done if you have a look at the condor build I've done on the channel I, I go into I think the first couple of parts and certainly the last part when I'm doing the weathering, I, I talk about mixing up the, the colours as well and trying to colour match with oils, and I find it quite easy. So, uh, I think we'll call that the end of part one, and that just shows you the, the application. So in the next step, um, I'll let this dry off a bit, show you what we've got then, and then just show you the sort of final steps you can do with a bit of streaking, maybe using oils neat as well, because... Um, if we do this back here in the middle of the fuselage, I'll take some of this ivory black that I had, and you can actually, you know, you can use oils like this for different effects, and you'll get kind of streaking effects like that. And then if you then thin down and dampen off so the brush is wet with thinners, you can kind of really pull it any way you want to then. It gives you a bit of play as you can see here and you see how this would be useful on armor or if you want to do streaking from um, exhausts and that sort of thing it's um, it's a very nice medium and this is on a bit of a more matter coat here so you can kind of see um, the difference you get there it bites a little bit more it doesn't run so freely and then you can use your cotton bud as well and you can do all sorts of different effects you can pull it out as much as you want and using stiffer brushes as well. I mean, we've got this one here, which is quite laden with um, thinner. If you do that, you can kind of get all sorts of different streaking. This is, you can use oils for wood grain effects as well by doing this the same sort of thing, kind of getting that streaking like we've got here. So if you do an orange over a nice base wood colour, you get a nice kind of wooden streaking effect. So hopefully that gives you some idea of just the basics of oils. Um, really, what I'm trying to say here is experiment. Um, use some of the, uh, the basics, like, you know, if you're going to, while you're trying, um, while you're starting out, Put a gloss coat on your final paintwork once you finish with everything and then use the oils and um, get them to how you want them to be and then once you're happy with the result seal it in and um, hopefully you'll have a, a nice effect when it comes to weathering.